What's going on guys? Welcome to NetSec Explain. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use brute forcing for web app security testing. Ugh, brute forcing, I know, a little too basic, but I wanted to make sure that we at least have this covered. So, what is brute forcing? Usually we use brute forcing as a way to guess someone's login credentials. For example, we try every possible password combination and hope we get one of them right. To put it more generally, we try everything and hope something sticks. It's not always effective, but when it is, it gives us much more access than clever guessing alone. So let's get started and take a look at how brute forcing works. For this demonstration, we're going to be using DVWA as our vulnerable web application. And before we get started, we're going to want to set the DVWA security setting to low. This will give us the simplest environment to work with. As always, the first thing you want to do with any new application that you're trying to break is to get an idea of what the underlying source code looks like. Here, we see a login page asking for a username and a password. We can type in a few different password values for the username admin, but without the right value, we're stuck with this message telling us that we have invalid credentials. Now, if we keep at it, we might notice that there is no limit to the number of attempts that we have to guess this password, meaning that there is no lockout mechanism. We might also notice that the way that we send a request never changes either. For example, we don't need to enter a CAPTCHA or guess what picture has a car in it. So what if we wrote a script that would do all this guessing and checking work for us? This is actually pretty easy to do in Python. Let's open up Sublime and use the Python requests module. This will let us run custom web requests. Next, because we had to log into DVWA to get here, we need to give it our session information. We can right click on the web page and go to inspect to pull up our debug menu. From here, go to application and then cookies. Here, we have the PHP session ID and security setting. Let's copy this information into our script and format it as a dictionary, that is, with key value pairs like so. Then, we want to record our base URL, which we can just copy pasta from the browser. We're not going to need these parameters at the end just yet, but we will later, so let's comment them out for now. Next, we're going to need a list of users and a list of passwords to try. For this quick demo, we'll just stick with our user admin. For our passwords, we'll type in a few different values. Normally, we would use a, a large word list, but I want to keep this small and simple for now, just to kind of grasp the basics. Okay, we're ready to pull it all together. As our brute forcer runs, we'll want to have some sort of output letting us know what user and password combination we're trying. To write this request, we're going to use the get method, where we'll set zero as our base URL, paste the parameters from earlier, and change the user to a one and the password to a two. Then we'll use format to set our variables. We also need to pass in our cookie values from earlier. Finally, we'll use an if statement to search for the fail string. And if we don't see it, that means that we've logged in. Or at least it's something worth looking into. Well, here's our finished code. If you haven't noticed already, I'm using Python 2.7. If you're using 3.x, you'll want to make some slight adjustments before this will work, but I figured I should let you know ahead of time. So let's go ahead and run the script. It might take a second importing the library, but when it's all done, we can see that one of our combinations worked. Admin, password. Awesome. Plug this into our browser, and boom, we're greeted with a successful login screen. So. There you have it, a simple and easy example of password brute forcing. Now, how could we take this further? Well, when it comes to brute forcing a login page, it's pretty straightforward. The only thing we can improve on is making it faster. Fortunately, someone has already done this for us in a tool called Hydra. Hydra is standard issue on Kali, but it runs on any operating system. I'll be using mine on Windows with Zigwin. Before I walk you through how to use Hydra, you should know that it can be a bit finicky at times. So I'm going to try and do my best to slow down, break up, and walk you through the syntax properly. The first two switches are really easy. L for login, P for password. Lowercase for one value, and uppercase for a list file. Pretty simple. Here I'm using the username leet1337 and the password list list.txt to check from. Next comes a domain name or IP address. Then the form type. I'm using a get form since the credentials were passed via a get request. This is the same reason we did this in our Python version. 
After this is where it gets a little bit more complicated. Copy the full URL from the browser and get rid of the HTTP and domain name since we have this in our command already. Now, where the question mark is, we're going to want to change that to a colon. And like in our script earlier, we need to set the username and password input so that Hydra knows where to inject the values into. Next, we'll copy in the login fail message starting with another colon. And finally, we need to set our cookie value. We can simply take this from our script or get it from the browser again like we did earlier. But we need to format this key equals value with a semicolon between parameters. All right, we're done. This is our full Hydra command. Double check for any mistakes before moving forward. It's easier to do this in Notepad or Sublime first. Trust me, I had to do this like eight times to get it all right for you guys. So since this is all supposed to be in a single command, we're gonna need to collapse this down. Go slow, there is no rush. And it's better than trying to troubleshoot what happened if you accidentally deleted a character in the middle of all of this. Now that our command is collapsed to one line, we can simply paste this into our terminal and let it do its thing. Here, we can see that it found one valid login with the username Leet and the password Charlie. Let's try it out. Hop back into the browser, type in the credentials, and boom! We can see that we have successfully logged into the password protected area. So, let's talk about mitigation. Brute forcing doesn't require a lot of technical skill, which means that pretty much anybody and everybody can do this to your web app. So the first thing you want to do is make sure that you're using complex passwords. And what I mean by complex passwords is that they're difficult for others to guess, but easy for you to remember. For example, my car has a dead battery is a complex password. Already, it's 20 characters, easy to remember, and highly unlikely that somebody would be able to guess it and it's very unlikely that it will be in a common password list. Next, user account lockout. I don't understand why, but I still come across companies and applications that don't enforce user account lockout. If somebody has failed to log in, say, five or more times, then it's very likely that something fishy is going on. And instead of letting them continue, you want to stop it and take a look. Account lockout simply means that after so many failed login attempts, that user cannot log in for at least half an hour. So if somebody was trying to break into a specific user account, then that means that they will only be able to guess five passwords every 30 minutes. Another way to slow down the attacker is to implement a slow crypto algorithm like bcrypt or scrypt. This slowdown won't be noticed by legitimate users, but it will be by brute force engines. It also has the added benefit of grinding password crackers to a halt should they obtain your password hashes somehow. And finally, CAPTCHAs. Now, these used to be considered secure, but they've been studied so much that they're not really effective anymore. Today, most CAPTCHA images can be cracked in about 1 to 15 seconds. Instead, you should consider these as a way to enforce rate limiting in your applications, and not as a real security mechanism to prevent brute forcing or other login attacks. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. For more information, check out the links in the description below, and don't forget to like and subscribe to see more videos like this. I'll see you next time.